Hello and welcome to Talking Tottenham. Today is September the 19th. We have signed Sergio Regulon and Gareth Bale is a Tottenham player once again. Come on. <laughs> oh. Man. If you said this two weeks ago about Bale, I would have been like, you're mad. Put him in a straight jacket. How many times have we heard it every every transfer window for the last three, four years? It ain't happening, it ain't happening. It happened, it's happened today. It's yeah, such a good feeling. <laughs> Even if it is just a loan. It, next season should be another loan. Then he's out of contract after that season. And if we give him, then he'll be about 33 nearly. If you give him another year, or maybe even two, then he can go off and play all the golf he wants in the world. I'm happy with that. But let's talk about Regulon first. Regulon. I just heard his video saying how he pronounces it, but I, I can, I tried ten times, I cannot say it <laughs> with the little accent bit, I can't do it. So Regulon, I'll go with, or Regulon, Regulon. Uh, <clears throat> If we weren't getting better and we just got Regulon, I would be buzzing. That's a hell of a player, a top left back. He reminds me of Rose when he was at the top of his game. He plays with no fear. Run round a couple of players, one, two, he's great crosses into the box. Just decent. It's going to create space as well when you have those sort of players pushing forward. Because the other team ain't got to go worry about our front three, they've got to worry about the full backs coming forward. And that's what we need. Oh, exciting times, I'll tell you, it's getting good. we just got to make it all gel now, quite quick. I know it's not going to be that easy, but... <sighs> come on, man, come on. <laughs> oh, I just... Oh, man, it's, it's just such a good signing for just him. If Hopefully, in, a year, in two years... Raul don't call him back. They're heavily happy with Furlan, Mendy. Well, they find someone else they want to buy, and that's that. And then we keep him. He's so, he's so exciting. I did want Tottenham to sign. This came back to last summer, not this one. Just gone. I was like, we should sign someone like Grimaldo at Benfica or Telas, the one who's being linked to United today. <clears throat> he's, 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 they're both good. They're both quality left backs as well. But this has come out of nowhere, man. This guy, I was watching him with Seville in the Europa League after the restart more. But um, he's exciting. He's just exciting, man. He's 23. He's just got his first Spain, full Spain cap for the senior team. Uh, uh, nothing but positivity. That's a great signing. And if we play three at the back, which I'm hoping we should do go to now, because they use two signings. <coughs> you can use Ben Davis as a left centre back or not, whatever. But Regulon, left wing back, Doherty, right wing back. Helping that makes it like the four across the midfield, because it'd be them two as like left wing, right wing, or midfield. Then you have Hoiberg with Villocelso or Ndombele, Undombele or what have you. Anyone. Delhi. That's so the wings get used. But <clears throat> that's a signing. I'm well happy with that. <laughs> Moving on to Bell. <laughs> this this guy gave me so many good memories. Like from what was it from 09? I was looking at one of my Spurs DVDs I got. Oh <laughs> nine I think it was, oh eight, oh nine. Mate, the goals he started scoring, and he just got better and better and better and better. He upped his levels every season, it seemed like, until he obviously left for Real Madrid. Um, quick thing, when Carrick left, I had a feeling that he might come back. He didn't. When Berbatov left, I had a feeling he might come back. He didn't. When Modric left, I had a feeling he might come back. He didn't. When Bale left, I had a feeling he might come back. And he has. He's the best one. What Out of them, out of them four... It's just, it's just a hell of a signing. It's gonna give. If those players don't get inspired by sitting next to him in the dressing room, just having him on the same team, the the confidence levels are gonna go shooting up. That's someone you can just give the ball to, hopefully. Not maybe not straight away. I know, but 
if someone you go, oh, well, I'm going to make the run for him. Or when you, when you look up for him, if he's in and around the box, you're going to look for him. That, and that player's going to, the other opposite team is going to be like, well, where's Bell? As well as where's Kane now? And, let, and where's Son? It's going to cause so much fucking chaos. It's going to be great. Oh, I can't wait for it to start clicking and Bale to get up to speed and my gosh. Uh, he's just going to be an unreal signing. Like people saying he's past it. Are you mad? Are you nuts? Do you need to be in a straight jacket? Sort your life out. <laughs> Aubameyang's a bit older than him. Who else was it the other day? He was about 31, 32. Oh. I think it was Aguero. Or is it? I can't even remember how, how old he is, but... They're, they're still doing it. I just think he's once he gets going, he'll be all, he'll be very well, very good. Even uh, in my head, I was just like, Do you know what? Taking his injury record into consideration, just say we had him for nine, half the season, nineteen games. You think he ain't gonna do the business in those games? Free kicks, long shots, fucking, oh, creating goals, build up play. Come on, <laughs> sort it out. <laughs> you ain't lost that. <laughs> I have a dream. Kane, Son, Bale, Lo Celso, Hoiberg, Regulon, Doherty. Oh, come on. And Dombele in and around in the mix and that. Oh, <clears throat> God. <laughs> it's a good day to be a Spurs fan and we ain't had so many good days. So this is, this is a good bloody day. Um, yeah, he does Regulon, came on to Regulon. He does remind me of Rose so much, like when he was that guy. Where you just take him around a couple of players, and suddenly you have the other position, like, oh, oh crap. Now he's bursting forward, and we've still got left wingers, attacking midfielders, strikers, right wing, right back going forward. It just creates havoc because it creates so much space. When, some, when one player goes around one or two players, and then they're going towards the third player, that you watch because it drags in players, there's more space opens up, and that's how you create goals. It's that simple, get a bit of space, get some shots off. Um <clears throat> I'm just <sighs> well like everyone else, I'm just buzzing. I'm I've I was buzzing yesterday when they arrived at Tottenham and everyone was waiting for the announcement and it didn't happen. They made us wait that like, whole day. It's liberties. Liberties. <sighs> but today, <laughs> and two hours before the scum kick off, I think they're kicking off about now actually. Um, yeah, it's just some little bit of banter and that and what have you. But uh, I'll take it. Well done, Levy. To be fair, I, I have slowly been going onto the thing of like Enic out because. I don't just need, even though we backed it, the boss, uh, Pochettino that was, with the Undombele money, and not forgetting, the Celso cost a bit of a wedge as well. P people forget that. Well, some people don't, but you know what I mean. Um, they just didn't click straight away, and so quick. This season, the Celso has already sort of adjusted halfway through last season. This season, if he starts playing even more, great, and um, up in his levels a little bit more, fantastic. Apparently Undombele and Mourinho have come to a bit of an agreement, like, they had a chat, in it. they both agreed that he ain't ready, and even um, Undombele said that, I ain't ready for 90 minutes, but use me over 45 an hour. At the moment I think it's going to be more from the second half, not from the start for an hour or something, be from the second half. If we're struggling, bring him on. Even if we're winning, bring him on, create more goals. Go for the neck. Um... See, with, with hopefully Hoiberg's settling in quick, hopefully. And then said with Lo Celso and Undombele switching about, coming on, I mean, taking turns and time and minutes. With Bale and Bergwijn, Son, I see Lucas going over there, maybe Sassignon, and Kane. I don't know, De I don't know about Delhi. I, 
I'll talk about him in a second. But yeah, it's looking good. Maybe we have going back to Delhi quickly. Yeah, we have got maybe we've got to sell him if you don't fit into the system. Because I don't want a uh, Mourinho and Pogba sort of situation going on with them two. Even though he has picked him up recently and stuff like that. It took him off at half time against Everton. That was purely tactical. You could tell he was just trying to change the game. It didn't. We was all pretty poor. Um, people saying he might not be playing tomorrow away to Southampton. Or he might not even be in the squad. Then I can see Delhi then trying to throw his toys out of the pram and getting a bit upset and sulking. New generations of players. Um, but he's not taking it in the right way. He's, I think because he, he started off so young and just went bang, you know, like Mourinho said, he just went bang. From MK Dons to Spurs to England, just everyone was fucking, everyone was loving him. And he's lost his form over the last two seasons. Oh yeah, quite a big injury in the two seasons ago. Whatever it was, he was out for like a couple of months. But still, he ain't got back to it. The player, it's in him. The player, what we all know and love, is in there. I think he's missing Ericsson. Because Ericsson used to set him up loads, man. And Ericsson was out with Kane and whoever else. But <clears throat> it's what he has to do, I think some of these players as well, the squad, because they know it ain't the same now. There's been changes. Ericsson was our main creator from deep, from any, from anywhere. Delhi was just making runs into the box usually and getting on the end of goals, uh, getting on the end of crosses and whatever. And Kane the same. And Son. Now they've got to get used to Lo Celso doing that, Undombele maybe doing that, and now Bergwijn, and then Regulon and Doherty. It's just different, but that's what you got to get. That's what that's where the gelling comes in. It's got to happen quite quick, or because we don't be stuck and starting and <gasps> what's going on. Then <clears throat> it starts a bit of a negativity, and maybe the squad base shouldn't do, but the fan base definitely it will, because we're quite fickle. Like most fans, but <clears throat> we all have our different mindsets. Um, but overall, I'm seeing lots of positivity. Mourinho wanted a different kind of mindset into the squad, and not for his future. He didn't want to keep buying youngsters. He said, "Now, now." Hoiberg is ready made. He knows Premier League now. He's got a great mindset. He's about winning and fighting for the team, and no out business. Though he just seems like he's very established, obviously, and knows the Premier League and he knows his position. And he just seems like calm, isn't he? He's like cool and calm and collected. He shouldn't be making no rash challenges like Aurier. So that's a better mindset, better player. Hart is actually, I think he's really good um, for the dressing room. <laughs> and maybe second choice, that's it. But that's still not bad to have it in the dressing room. Regulon is just going to breed like. It's that liveliness and positivity and energy, fucking energy. He easy gets about you about the pitch, man. You full of it. He's just young. He's 23. He's loving life. He's probably at the peak. Of, well, not maybe not peak, but he's peaking at, at that age of energy and that. I just think it's going to be great. Um, then obviously bail into the equation of all that. Is what's he? Why ain't he won? In you know compared to I know in England. I mean, he hasn't won out but um four Champions Leagues and scoring on the big occasions in Champions Leagues two or two out of those four times I think and a Copa del Rey final against Barcelona if you do it on the big occasions that shows you what kind of player you are you, you ain't got no fear on the big games so they've got those sort of players and that sort of mentality could build up in that squad it should start breeding Kane sort of got it but he's needed that help now he's got help. It's just it's oh it's just looking good. I think Dyer can come out of his shell as well a bit more. I think he's following Mourinho and Delhi's sort of not in the mindset thing. Um look Reese Louis shocked me from that documentary. I didn't realise how much of a captain y type of player he was. I still don't like a goalkeeper as captain though. Or strikers, to be fair. I like a good centre back or centre midfielder. I don't like wingers, I don't like left back full backs. Goalkeepers are strikers, I'm just that way. I'm like centre backs, centre midfielders. They see, I know goalkeepers see everything, but you know what I mean. Centre backs are on the pitch, they can proper give it some. Centre midfielders, definitely. <coughs> so I see a lot of positivity and positives coming 
this season, hopefully next season, if they keep Mourinho, our performances up, you know, upgrade and the way out of the business, up in our game and that. I don't see nothing but positivity coming our way and results. <laughs> if we do stick to the Mourinho formation of 4 2 3 1, or maybe sometimes 4 3 3, fair enough, but because more counter attacking, Bale, and even regular from left back, I can see him getting forward. I think, I think Mourinho has to change that um, tactic where he has to cut in, uh, go into the back three. That ain't going to happen with regular. So, regular on bombing forward with Son up there, Bale, Kane, Lo Celso in and around it, and Doherty. That's going to cause trouble. A lot of trouble. So, I'm just <laughs> I'm waiting. It's just got to start clicking soon. And yeah, we might have to wait two or three weeks for, or maybe they said after the October international break for Bale to start getting some minutes. Fair enough, it might be like 20, 30 minutes at first, then 45, you know, then an hour. And all that business, and all that business until he starts doing what we know he can do. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, gonna, it's just a great day and I see our season going in the right direction. I don't see us coming sixth. Personally, fourth, I see us. The reason being is that Man United have a crap defence. I only like Wan Bissaka. They're trying to get left back, fair enough, but they, they, I think Lindelof and Matt Maguire, they're just crap. They're crap. They've gone off the boil, man. Even Not just this season, but even like the restart, it just wasn't that great. I think they just need to buy a whole new backline, really. Well, so I said, except for Wamba So they've got all the flair they want from midfield and attack now. Great. But you're still going to leak goals. Same as Chelsea. They spent a hell of a lot of money on the attack. They spent 50 million on Chilwell, fair enough. And Thiago Silva on a free. Thiago Silva is going to be a great defender for them. He'll help them out, but he ain't going to play all the games. So then they've still got a dodgy centre back. You know, and that's your main weakness. Centre back. So they're going to score goals, but they're going to leak him as well. Our defence ain't great, but I think it might be a bit more established than that, than theirs, this season. So, and with the help of Hoiberg helping do that job properly now, that's what's going to help. And so I, I think fourth, I'll take it as well, but maybe third. <laughs> but I'll take fourth. And we're not even finishing the transfer market, apparently. Maybe striker and another centre-back. <laughs> oh. Man, if, if we... Just say no one gets him this summer. But next uh, next season, we should definitely try and get that Ruben Diaz of Benfica. It, I love that guy. He looks quality. He will come in. Give that defensive oomph as well. Um, this striker thing, I think it's going to be that Baz Dost because he's quite cheap and it'll be a year, maybe two. He'll be in and around the squad, maybe season and a half type of thing. And then we might sell him, who knows, for a pound or something. <laughs> but I wouldn't mind someone decent to actually make Ken go, oh, you know, it's not 100% guaranteed, but likely it is. But just say someone like Belletti or or Bellotti, Bellotti, sorry, from Torino, or if we get Jovic on loan from Real Madrid, that kid, when, he, when he started banging those goals for Frankfurt in Germany, left foot, right foot, headers, overhead kicks, and he went to Real Madrid, I was like, oh, that geezer's set, that he's going to be amazing, but it has just not gone that way. They stuck with Benzema. Fair enough, he's been there a long time, but I just think they need to upgrade. They should have done it a couple of seasons seasons ago. Start, you know, Barcelona and Ram just and upgrading their teams, but they sort of not done it correct. Anyway, that's about it, about it for the video. That's um, my reaction video for the signings of Reguilon and Bale for today. Oh. I'm just excited now. I just want it to all start get gelling and working out and playing well and getting results. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. 
I did do a video, by the way. I did do a video for the Thursdays when we beat Plovdiv. But for some reason, it didn't upload properly, and I weren't doing it again because it wasn't that exciting. It weren't worth my another 10, 15 minutes. It wasn't. Um, <laughs> Burned on belly, come on, they look good. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. I'll speak to you soon. And hopefully, Tottenham win Sunday against Southampton. Up. Well, let's just hope. Well, I don't think regular or not. Well, Bow ain't playing, but I don't think I don't know if regular one's going to be allowed. Can't remember about the cut-off period, but I won't rush him anyway. Just not this game. Maybe next weekend after the home game. I'm out, guys. See you soon. Tala.